What if all museums were online, or at least also were online? During the last weekend, we were scheduled to be in London, and uh, we aimed to see the, the big four events that we, we thought we could find there. Due to some um, circumstances, we couldn't go because of the ash, and we did not have an opportunity to take any visits. What should we do then? Well, we uh, gathered some, some thoughts, we called some friends, uh, I consulted the, the ordinary phone book, which didn't really work, and then I checked online because we wanted to see some museums and our kids are, are eight and five and, and they are sort of, they, they like to see what they will, what they will experience. And uh, most of what you see in the terms of museums online are text. It's text and some, some images. This is from Musée d'Orsay in France. This is a Swedish museum uh, which, who states, what's on? It's exciting, isn't it? And, uh, <laughs> and here is the, the Louvre in France, which is one of the largest museums in the world. And this is an interactive, or it's, it's sort of interactive, which isn't that fun for a kid to watch. And uh, the same goes with the Mary Rose Museum. Sorry for, for having the Maritime Museums, but, but that's where I have my focus. Again, a lot of texts. So what, what should we do? And what we actually di did uh, was that we, we entered a couple of museums and we found something which is not as the internet ex experience. It's images and objects and very little text. With this background, I'd like to go back in time a couple of years when I first heard of the Vraumaria story. It's a story of a ship who traveled uh, in, from one foreign country to another foreign country. She sank and with her she had Rembrandt and Rubens' uh, original art destined for the, the Empress of Russia, Catherine the Great. And um, she sank in Finland or just at the time in Sweden and uh, she was lost lost for about 200 years and nobody knew what would happen. Then about 10 years ago somebody found her and it started a journey and, and I, got I got curious. I wanted to see what kind of ship is there, what, what kind of story is there online or in the sea. Somehow I'd like to see it. And uh, what we did was that we started to research what kind of online or what kind of museum experiences are there. And we found that most of the museums, as I said, uh, there are a lot of images and objects and very little text. This is from, from the Ra Museum in Oslo. And uh, then there's usually a museum shop. The museum shop is lots of books, some souvenirs, and maybe nothing more. What we wanted to do then was to, in a sense, gather our thoughts. What, what did we have? What kind of information could we create a museum of? out of this, uh, this story. So we gathered um, a, a couple of days in this uh, workshop. We, we um, gathered all kinds of information that we had and we found that we could actually create a museum on the premises of a normal, normal museum, which is mostly images and very little text. We had lots of images. We had no objects because the ship is still inside the, the sea. So what we did was we did research again, and this is the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg. What kind of online museums are there? This is one of the one of the things that you can find there. It's a floor map with dots. If you click on one of these dots, you get closer, and then you can have some kind of interactive experience. This is a virtual panorama where you can glide with your mouse, and then you can look around. But there's not a possibility to walk between these dots. And if you'd like to see what's in this room, it's impossible. Because the uh, author of this online experience did not sort of choose to show this one. What else is there? There are several versions of Flash. Uh, in this one, this is a, a La Coupole in France. It's a, a museum and then you can hover with your mouse and you get text. And again, I, I'd, I'd like to indulge in the museum. I'd like to go into it and see, experience it online as if I were there physically. Well, it's not that simple. And um, we did not find any technology anywhere in the world that could offer us a complete walkable um, 
experience of how, how this could, could be done. What we did was we, we gathered some, some facts and we wanted to create a museum, an online community or, or a museum really. And we, we um, took into account that people are interested in this experience from, from all over the world. This is from the Vramaria uh, Maritime Museum and, and we have 54 countries and a lot of, of the United States and a lot of Sweden uh, for, for this uh, time period. But it's Africa, it's Australia, it's South America and, and it, so it's not a museum is normally not a local thing. This was a Dutch ship going with art to, to St. Petersburg. It could be very local, but it's not. Uh, I then went back in time and, and remember my studies um, where uh, this guy, um, Mr. David Bolter, he wrote about hypertext in the early internet. And he said that the, the concept is in a normal book, the writer decides in what order the user the, or the reader should consume the, the content. So the writer decides, okay, here is the introduction, here is the content, here is the conclusion. On the internet, we have another sort of concept because the user, through hyperlinking, can choose which order he will consume or she will consume the content. So in a book, the author decides the, con the experience. On the internet, the user decides. And, the us and he says that the user actually becomes the author of the experience. So it really sort of grabbed and, and puzzled me. How can we create an, an online museum where the users can create their museum? We did. We, we created an online museum, which is a walkable museum. And uh, this, this museum is um, it's a prototype, in a sense, of a concept. We call it, it's made by, by the technique which is called visual walk and it's like visually walking inside of, of a, of a um, um, sort of a premises or a museum or could be done to shopping malls or anything. Uh, the, the concept is that if you'd like to go there, you go there, as in the gaming community. The difference is that you don't need any uh, special application. You can just use your own software, your, your own web browser, your own phone or whatever. And because um, it needs to be transparent to many countries. We also use the Google Translate tool, so we have some 20, 20 or 30 different languages instantly translated. And, and that gives an opportunity for a availability for people to consume museum content. And that really excites me. Because I have seen museums in China and South America and in, in, in the Arab world, and I don't at all speak the language. And unless they have it in English translation, I'm lost. I can just see the images, but I can't see any content. So in this case, you, you want you'd like to go there, you click there, and you go further. I'd like to, to give uh, another example, and this is a technical museum in Stockholm. Here, the navigation is a little bit different. If you'd like to go forward, you can click that, and you can turn around, and you can go sideways and, and backwards. The objects are quite large and the text is quite small. I'd, I'd now <coughs> like to go back into the user experience and how can users contribute to the content of the museum. Here is a showcase of the ship and um, here is a video monitor inside or a video showcase inside the museum. And uh, if I then click play 1771 seglade ett skepp i havet. Det var fullastat med tavlor och statyer gjorda av guld och silver. De var faktiskt värda flera miljoner. I'll pause for a second. So this is a young boy's experience of a museum. He's been to the museum and he then decided to give uh, somebody a birthday present. He wanted to, f to create a fairy tale. And he took a, a cell phone and recorded a message for about three minutes, which we then put online. And the concept is, who is, what, what, what this would illustrate, who is the expert in the museum? Maybe it's the curator or the, the person working, working at the museum, or maybe it's the visitor. And in some other visitor's eyes, maybe a visitor might be a better guide than some of the people working at the museum. 
Of course, there needs to be some quality control. But, but this is an example of how content can be created by the users. And in terms of, of and in times of uh, financial deficit and, and where well, museums don't have enough money, maybe we can learn from the blogs and YouTube to have users contribute their stories to the museums. So what did we learn? by this experience. We couldn't go to London, so we went to Stockholm and we saw the city hall, we saw the sky view, similar here, we saw the Skansen, and we couldn't go to British, British Museum, but we went to see the mummies in Stockholm. What if these museums where we wanted to go were online? Maybe our kids and, and we could have toured the Egyptian Museum at the British Museum instead of uh, finally finding a similar experience in Stockholm.